Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vajit Shabir with another interesting case on ECG interpretation. This is the ECG which we are going to discuss today. But before starting the discussion, as always, pause your videos, note down the findings and diagnose it with yourself so that at the end of the video, you can compare your findings and diagnosis with the discussion done in this ECG. So let's begin the discussion. The most prominent thing which you can note on this ECG is that there is a tachycardia with a heart rate around 300 150, the heart rate around 140 to 150. Also, there is a broad QRS. The QRS complexes are broad, as you can see here. The QRS complexes are broad. So, this is a broad complex tachycardia. Now, now whenever you find an ECG with broad complex tachycardia, the next thing which you should look for and you should ask yourself is whether this is a regular broad complex tachycardia or it is a, an irregular broad complex tachycardia because both of these have different different differential diagnoses as well as different management strategies so in the next step we look at whether the r r intervals are regular or not here you can see in the rhythm strip that the distance between two RRs, that is RR interval, it is almost identical. There is no variation in RR interval. So we can say that this is a broad, complex, regular tachycardia. Now there are three main differentials of broad complex regular tachycardia first is ventricular tachycardia secondly it could be svt with aberrancy and third is antidromic avrt now to dif differentiate between ventricular tachycardia and these two types of supraventricular tachycardia we apply a criteria called Brugada's criteria, which has around 90 to 95 percent sensitivity and specificity. Now, this slide shows the Brugada criteria for diagnosis of VT or SVT if you find a broad, complex, regular tachycardia. As you can see here, that the first step in Brugada criteria is to look for presence or absence of RS complexes in precardial leaves. If a RS, an RS complex is absent in all precardial leaves, then it will be a ventricular tachycardia. If this is not the case, then we move on to the next step. Now the next step is to localize a QRS complex which has R and S waves and see whether the distance of R wave to the NIDR of S wave is more than 100 millisecond. If it is more than 100 millisecond, it is definitely VT with a specificity of 98%. If the RS interval is less than 100 millisecond, then we have a third step which is AV dissociation. We look for presence of P waves and QRS complexes. In case of AV dissociation and ventricular tachycardia, there will be less P waves as compared to QRS complex and there will be no association between P waves and QRS complexes. If AV dissociation is present, then this is our ventricular tachycardia. Otherwise, we, we move on to the morphological criteria for presence of VT, in which we look at the morphology of QRS complex in lead V1 and V6. If the morphology of QRS complex 
meets the criteria for VT, then it will be ventricular tachycardia. Otherwise, this will be uh, supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction. Now, what is the morphological criteria for ventricular tachycardia? For morphological criteria, firstly, we look at whether the ECG shows our left bundle branch block or our right bundle branch block. If the ECG shows a uh, left bundle branch morphology, then a presence of small R with deep S in lead V1 along with a prominent R in lead V6 is suggestive of a supraventricular tachycardia. However, if the V1 shows a broad initial small R wave, along with a wide terminal S wave with a notch in the center of the descent of S wave also called as Josephson sign along with a small Q and tall R in lead V6 it means that this is a ventricular tachycardia and if the ECG shows a right bundle branch morphology then for rhythm to be SVT there should be small r then there should be S wave and there are terminal r r prime in V1 along with a tall r and small s in lead V6 with an RS ratio of more than 1 and for rhythm to be VT and QRS complex having right bundle branch block morphology presence of a monophasic R wave in lead V1 or a small Q and tall R wave in lead V1 along with an RS ratio of less than 1 it suggests a ventricular tachycardia now we will look at the our case and try to apply the Brugada criteria. As we know, the first step is to look for the concordance. As we can see that V1 shows up tall R wave, and after that, you can see that there is S wave in lead V2. Similarly, there is an R wave and deep S wave in lead V6. So, the absence of uh, concordance is ruled out here so we move on to the next step which is the distance between the R wave and the nidr of S wave should be more than 100 millisecond we can see that the distance between the R wave and the S wave is around two small scales which is 80 millisecond which means this is not a ventricular tachycardia as per second step on Brugada criteria. Now the next step is the presence of AV dissociation. When we look at the rhythm strip, we cannot see a definite P wave in lead 2. So we cannot comment on AV dissociation in this case. Similarly, we cannot find any capture beads or fusion beads on this ECG. And so we move on to the morphological criteria for differentiation between uh, ventricular tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia in evidence. As we can see that there is a tall R in lead V1, which means that this is a right bundle branch block morphology. So as we know, as we discussed earlier, that a presence of small Q along with a tall R in lead V1 along with a RS ratio of less than 1 in V6 with a QRS morphology of right bundle branch block it means that this is a ventricular tachycardia so we can say that this ECG shows a wide complex regular tachycardia which has a right bundle branch morphology in lead V1 and V6 and it is consistent with diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia when we apply the morphological criteria 
to differentiate between ventricular tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia. This is all for today. Hopefully you like the video. For more videos, kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Allah Hafiz and take care till next time.